With Lowrance HDS, I had one of the best seasons of all time. Winning at Gunnersville, structure scan revealed a stretch of river channel lined with stumps and loaded with fish. And at Smith Mountain, I used GPS mapping to find specific windblown points that held the biggest bass. If you want to win like me, you better get HDS. I'm Skeet Reese. Change your view with HDS and structure scan. All right, you're hanging out with the G-Man. We're sitting out here on Gunnersville. It's a cloudy, wintry day. Not the ideal day for dock skipping, but it's what I get known for a lot, is skipping docks, skipping docks. Everybody wants to go skip docks. Not with a spinning reel. My wife does that. I throw it with a bait caster. 20-pound line is my most preferred line size. I throw vicious four carbon. A 3 8 ounce old school arky jig. This is a ball head. A little Zoom twin tail trailer. A little finesse skirt on there. It's whatever I had tied on from Lake Norman. But that's the combination I would skip 90% of the time. Don't try to skip too heavy a bait. You start out with a half and three quarters. It's really a fight. Three eighths is all you need. This is a seven foot medium heavy smoke quantum rod, a six three to one reel. And everything after that is basic technique, the cast, the roll of the wrist, and the placement of the bait. And we're gonna try to shortcut your learning experience in just a few minutes on Wired to Fish on how to skip docks on Lake Gunners one, and if we're lucky, we'll get a bite. When I make the cast, I roll my wrist, and I stare at the area I want to throw at. You know, I keep the, I kind of keep the rod down on a roll. When, that, when I'm reeling my bait in, I kind of keep slack out. I roll my wrist, the bait around, under the dock. You almost want to picture that bait sliding, and it will simply slide across the water. You know, it's, uh, it's hard to practice this on the lake sometimes, so many people are scared they're going to get backlashes, they're going to run their stuff. If you have any piece of concrete or somewhere at home that you can slide a bait across of, get, get up in a chair and just start rolling your wrist and skipping that bait and skipping that bait on that concrete till you get the smoothness of the cast where the bait wants to flow out there and flop. If, the, if it's hitting the concrete hard and bouncing, it's going to hit this and bounce. A couple of things you don't want to do is don't tighten all your stuff down so tight that the line won't come off your reel. Most people want to do that thinking they're going to prevent a backlash and all you're going to do is form a backlash because it's going to make you overthrow. It's no different than a pro player over swinging on a baseball bat. You don't want to overthrow the cast. You simply want to be able to flip your wrist and send it under there and put it in those areas. And this technique for me, I started doing this on Smith Lake years and years and years and years ago. Makes me sound old. Really? Hell, I'm not that old. Hang on, back that up a little bit. I started doing it many years ago, trying to catch fish that were highly pressured when you didn't have a lot of fish in the lake. And you're trying to put the bait in areas where you think other guys are not putting their bait in. And I know if I come through here flipping, guys have got these outside poles. I skip 15 or 20 foot back in the dock. It's a real subtle approach. I'm all of a sudden fishing new water. So, I mean, it's simply a, a technique, an advantage on your competitor. When I throw that bait in there like that, I like to hop it. You'll notice I constantly keep it moving. Very little do I let the bait sit now. And I just left Lake Norman, and the bite there was really kind of funny. Skip those docks. You actually had to drag the bait. Once you got it under there, you had to just drag it out from under. That's very unusual to see that. Most of those fish are unmolested under the docks and they're generally pretty aggressive. So if you make the cast, keep your line tight, and hop the bait a little bit and let it hit the bottom, you're generally gonna get the strike within the first two movements of the bait because the fish is aware the bait came in there by the initial action on the water. He knows it's around him, and usually they'll run it down and they'll be sitting there looking at it. As soon as you move it, they bite it. A lot of the bites even occur as soon as you pick it up. You know, they got it. So that's a couple of quick things, but it's the wrist action. I mean, you get the backhand cast, you want to work on that. It's not going to come and you're never going to have it perfected. It's a lot can go wrong with the backhand. I mean, look at McEnroe. He didn't last long in tennis doing it. Let's get to the next dock down here and we'll look at some more techniques and what we're kind of feeling for under there. See a black spot right there. You really want to focus on your targets prior to getting to the dock, you kind of know the area, stare at it, look at your next cast. And when I make this cast, no matter where my rod tip's at, 
my eyes never leave my target of where I want that bait to hit. If I want to go by that red pole, my eyes will never leave that, come off that red pole back here. And I'm constantly going to be looking at that red pole and skipping. Looking at that red pole and skipping. And if I started down that dock, I want to move it to the next pole. I stare at that pole, skip in beside it, skip in beside it, skip in beside it. The bait's down. I work it a little bit. No bite. I look right to the next pole. Maybe I want to go in beside it, keep your eye on the target, skip it right in by it. Never take your eye off the target that you're trying to hit. If you, if you catch yourself trying to skip docks, you're looking at the dock and you're watching your rod and your target. If I want to put that bait in between that pole and that square pole, I stare at that target. Now I went right to the right of the square pole, but not bad for a rookie. Simply keep your eye on where you want your lure to go. When you take your eye off that, is when the whole puzzle starts coming unwound. So I'm moving up each level, each time I'm going up that walkway, just going and going and going. You know, and if I can skip in on a piece of brush, that's even better. Situ yes, I would get in this situation, it would be kind of hard to throw that way. So if my hands aren't cold and my back hand's good, I go right back where I needed to be. Whew! I thought one bit that. Karate chop.